Today in our 2017 Ford F-250 Super Duty, we're going to be installing Airlift's Lift Loader 5000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL57399. We've now got our vehicle loaded up with an excessive amount of weight dropping down our suspension. We're measuring now about 41 and a quarter inches. So we're down almost three and three quarter inches from our factory ride height. And when we come to the front and recheck our measurements, our front is raised up to 42 inches from the factory ride height of 41 and a half. So now that our vehicle's loaded down and it's changed our ride height, what this means to you is that you're gonna have reduced braking power because the weight's not gonna transfer to the front as it did in its factory ride height. You're gonna have reduced handling performance because your suspension angles are now different than what they were due to the ride height change. And it'll also cause excessive tire wear because of that angle change. And now at about 50 PSI, while the vehicle's loaded, our ride height has returned to its factory spec of about 44 inches. And our front has dropped back down to about 41 inches. So everything's level again. These air springs are gonna be a versatile way to even out the load on your vehicle and also to prevent sagging and restore that factory ride height when loaded up with a heavy load. One of the things that sets this kit apart from other suspension enhancement systems, such as your Timbrin springs or leaf spring assists, is that you can adjust the left side and right side independently, allowing to adjust for uneven loads. These springs will offer 5,000 pounds of load leveling support. Now this doesn't increase the load that you can carry with your vehicle, it just provides support to even out that ride height making it a more comfortable, safer ride going down the road. Bringing your factory ride height back to straight is gonna help increase the life of your vehicle. It's gonna cause tire wear to be more even because the geometry hasn't changed. It's gonna provide cushioning for the rest of your suspension to help dampen those bumps going down the road. Each airbag has an operating range between five and 100 PSI. Five for being completely unloaded and 100 PSI for maximum load capacity. We'll begin our installation by performing some pre-assembly on our airbag. We'll begin by placing one of the roll plates over top, lining up both our screw holes and our air fitting hole. On top of that, we're gonna place one of the upper brackets. This bracket will line up with both the screw holes. You wanna place the elongated hole towards the front of the vehicle, and your air fitting will face towards the inside of the vehicle. So the unit we're assembling here is gonna be for the passenger side. So this will be towards the front and this will be towards the center. Then take one of the hex bolts, slide on a lock washer and a flat washer, thread it through the hole, and we'll do the same thing in the other hole. Then tighten those down using a 916 socket. Then thread in your air fitting in the open hole. You'll thread this in finger tight and then give it an additional one and a half turns using a 13 millimeter wrench. Now you can flip the unit over. We'll place a roll plate on the bottom, lining up the opening in your sticker. We'll then take the lower bracket. We're gonna slide the long carriage bolts down through the bracket, making sure the threaded end is the same as the angled end there. Do that for both of the square holes. Then sit this on your airbag, lining up the holes with the roll plate and the airbag. Make sure that your angled ends are on the opposite side as your fitting. We'll then use the Allen head tapered bolts and thread those to the airbag. Then tighten those down with a 7 30 seconds Allen head key. Now take the cup that'll go where your jounce bumper used to contact on the bottom side. We'll set that on the bracket. We'll take one of the small carriage bolts, slide it down through the bracket, and on the other side we'll place on a flat washer. followed by the thin lock nut. You want to make sure that when you've got it installed on there that you can still slide it back and forth. So you just want to tighten it just enough to where it'll stay in place but not to where it'll prevent movement of your bracket. Next we'll remove the two bolts that hold in our jounce bumper. We'll remove these with a 15 millimeter socket.
we'll set those aside. We won't be reinstalling them. Next, use your screwdriver to pop out these bolts. You'll need to pry them down on the flange there. Then you can just pull rearward and they'll pop out of there. Then take the universal nuts that come with the kit and clip those into position where the bolts that we just removed were. Again, using your screwdriver will help to pry it back into place. And we'll do that with both holes. Now we'll put our upper mounting bracket in. We want to make sure that the elongated hole faces towards the front of the vehicle and the small hole cut out here on the side faces towards the inside of the vehicle. Then place down carriage bolts. These are the medium sized carriage bolts into each of the corners. Raise your bracket into position and use the black Allen head key bolts to thread it into the universal nuts that we just installed. Tighten these down with a six millimeter Allen key. Then tighten and torque your hardware to the specifications and your instructions. Now we can lift our airbag assembly into position up over our axle. Want to make sure that the flange side goes toward your leaf spring and that each of the long carriage bolts go on each side of your axle. You can now squish your airbag down and place the upper bracket holes and line them up with the bolts on the upper bracket that's on the frame. To make it easier to get it in there, you could lift up on the body of the vehicle to increase the gap between the axle and the frame. Make sure that it's slid all the way up against your leaf spring and that the cutouts on the lower bracket go around the U-bolts around your leaf spring. Then take the large U-bolt in your kit, put it around the support for your leaf spring, and we're going to slide it through the uppermost holes in our lower airbag bracket. Then slide on a flat washer, followed by a lock nut. We'll do that on both sides and then we're going to tighten them down just until they touch for now. We'll snug them up using a 916 socket. Now put the bracket that will pinch your lower bracket between your axle on the long carriage bolts. If it doesn't want to go on straight and it's hitting on your brake line here you may need to bend that out of the way. We'll just use a flat bladed screwdriver just to pop that out of its bracket clip there and just give it a slight bit of angle so our bracket will go in place. You also want to make sure that the brake line isn't contacting the threads on your long carriage bolt because that may cause wear on your brake line. Now we can place a flat washer on the bottom of each carriage bolt and thread on a lock nut. We'll then tighten those down using a 9 16th socket. Making sure to tighten back and forth so they tighten down evenly. On each of the carriage bolts that comes down from your top bracket, slide on a flat washer followed by a lock nut. Now using a 9 16th socket, tighten all those bolts down. Now torque all of your hardware to the specifications and your instructions. And now you repeat the same process on the other side. Now we'll take the air hose that came in our kit, we'll unwind it, fold it in half, and cut two equal lengths. We're using our hose cutter tool here. This will ensure that it cuts evenly and straight, so that way it has a good seal when it's pushed into the fitting on your airbags. Now you need to find an appropriate mounting location for your air hoses. These can be mounted anywhere on your back bumper. Some people put them in the lid for their gas tank. You can also fabricate your own bracket if you don't want to drill into the vehicle. We've gone ahead and found ourselves a little plastic piece we're going to use to mount it on our hitch here. We're just going to use some zip ties to attach it. We're now going to plug our hose into our airbag and then route the wiring. I'm going to show you how to plug it into your airbag and then I'll show you the way that I routed it. You'll take the end of the air hose that you just cut 
and you simply push it into the fitting. Make sure that it presses in all the way. I like to go in and out a few times just to verify that it's secure and stuck in and that it's fully seated. You can then push that back and begin routing your hose towards wherever location that you decided to mount it. When routing your hosing, you wanna make sure you avoid any excessively hot objects such as your exhaust, any moving objects such as your steering and suspension. We decided to follow our factory wiring down the frame rail, up over the spare tire. Here we looped up the excess, zip tied it to the factory wiring, and ran it to the bracket that we installed. You'll attach it to wherever you want to mount it by putting a nut on the hose first, followed by the star washer, sliding it through the hole. Then on the other side, you'll put the rubber grommet, flat washer, and nut. Then you just tighten those down, making sure that you have enough excess sticking out for your air fitting to fit on to apply air to your system. And now to protect our airbags, we're gonna install a heat shield on the exhaust. Before you install it, you're gonna to wanna to take the center tabs, fold them inwards at a 90 degree, and then about three quarters of the way down, fold it back out 90 degree again. This will provide an air gap, allowing heat to properly be deflected from your airbags. Now you can place your heat shield with the clamp located on one of the arms that we bent, up on your exhaust system, pointed between the exhaust and your airbag to deflect that heat. Then just tighten down the clamp to hold it in place. Now that you got them both tightened down, go ahead and just bend them back just a little bit. Make sure you have an air gap between your exhaust and the heat shield. Now you want to air up your airbags, making sure not to exceed their maximum capacities and check for leaks. Air it up in short bursts because a small amount of air builds pressure very quickly. Now spray your fittings with soapy water and check for leaks. You see the presence of bubbles? You know you have a leak. If there's no presence of any bubbles, you can move on to the next fitting and check there. If no bubbles are present, you're ready to load up your truck and hit the road. Now that you've got your truck loaded up and you've adjusted it to the appropriate pressure for that load, go ahead and thread on the two caps that come with it to protect your fittings from any dirt, debris that might get in there and cause them to start leaking. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs on our 2017 Ford F-250.